the silent genocide, the persecution of the Dega people under the Hanoi government. The world has witnessed numerous instances of persecution, and time and again these stories remind us of humanity's capacity for cruelty. While mass atrocities like the Holocaust or the Rwandan genocide receive significant global attention, there are less publicized, yet equally tragic, cases that deserve scrutiny. One such case is the ongoing oppression of the Dega people, an indigenous group in Vietnam, rooted in the Central Highlands. This essay argues that the Hanoi government's systematic repression of the Dega people constitutes a form of genocide, manifesting through forced displacement, violent suppression, and state-led initiatives that undermine their existence and rights as a distinct people. The Dega, or Montagnards as they are sometimes referred to, have a rich cultural history and are characterized by their unique languages, traditions, and communal lifestyles. However, the Hanoi government's policies over the past several decades have sought to erase this cultural identity and control the Dega's ancestral lands, an area of significant strategic value due to its resources and geographical location. With development projects such as hydropower dams, logging, and land reclamation, the government operates under the guise of modernization and economic growth, effectively sidelining the Dega people's rights and erasing their cultural heritage. One of the most crucial aspects of this silent genocide is the uncomfortable and often intolerable living conditions imposed on the Dega people. Faced with land confiscation, environmental degradation, and a myriad of infringements on their rights, the Dega are subjected to a relentless state apparatus that marginalizes and dehumanizes them. Reports from human rights organizations indicate that the Hanoi government employs various strategies to suppress dissent among the Dega. This includes the militarization of the region, where security forces monitor their activities, severing community ties, instilling fear, and restricting freedom of expression. As these oppressive conditions persist, it is only natural for any group to resist. However, when the Dega people attempt to stand up against their oppressors, they are met with brutal crackdowns and accusations of terrorism. The government's labeling of Dega activists as terrorists serves a dual purpose. It delegitimizes their grievances and allows the state to justify violent repression under the guise of national security. This scapegoating tactic not only aims to silence dissent, but also fosters a narrative that vilifies the Dega, stripping them of their humanity in the eyes of the broader Vietnamese populace. For those who cannot withstand the harshness of life in Vietnam, many have attempted to flee the country in search of refuge. The tragic irony lies in the fact that seeking asylum abroad subjects them to even greater risks. The Hanoi government's reach does not stop at its borders. It actively pursues and harasses Dega individuals who escape to foreign nations, applying diplomatic pressure to facilitate their forcible return. These repatriated individuals face the grim prospect of retribution, imprisonment, or worse. Such actions epitomize the lengths to which the Hanoi government will go to extinguish what it views as an existential threat to its control over the region. The concept of genocide, as defined by the UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, encompasses acts committed with the intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. When applying this definition to the plight of the Dega, various elements become evident. The first element is the deliberate infliction of living conditions calculated to bring about physical destruction. The systematic confiscation of land, accompanied by exploitation of natural resources, ensures that the Dega are systematically disenfranchised and stripped of their means of survival. In turn, such conditions facilitate broader societal neglect, resulting in hunger, health crises, and an increased rate of suicide. Moreover, the ongoing forced repatriation of Dega asylum seekers reflects the intent to take drastic measures against the group, further indicating genocidal intent on the part of the Hanoi government. By forcibly returning these individuals and subjecting them to state-sanctioned violence, the government not only seeks to obliterate the Dega presence, but also sends a chilling message to potential dissenters. There is no escape or refuge from the regime's reach. This culture of fear extends swiftly into the Dega communities, resulting in a cycle of silence and submission 
as individuals realize that resistance can only lead to dire consequences. The Dega people are not merely subjects of a government policy. They are victims of a dark narrative that has determined their fate. The escalation of violence against them is supported by regions of the Vietnamese population and the narrative spun by the government, creating an environment in which their suffering becomes invisible. For many in the international community, the Dega people's plight remains unknown, largely due to a lack of media coverage and the government's total control over information. This silence allows the genocide to continue unabated, as those in power benefit from international indifference and ignorance. In addition to state-led actions, the complicity of global actors must be called into question. Countries often prioritize economic relations with Vietnam over human rights considerations, leading to a tacit acceptance of the regime's policies against the Dega. Governments that have historically raised concerns about human rights violations find it convenient to overlook the plight of marginalized groups when doing so serves their geopolitical or economic interests. This complicity, whether explicit or implicit, undermines collective global efforts in addressing genocide and ethnic cleansing, the very principles enshrined in international law. Raising awareness regarding the Dega people's situation transcends simple information dissemination. It necessitates active advocacy, where humanitarian organizations must lobby for the rights of the Dega and hold the Vietnamese government accountable for its actions. Global actors should also strive to create coalitions and support networks for displaced Dega individuals, ensuring that resettlement programs take into consideration the security needs and preservation of cultural heritage for the Dega communities. That way, international attention can shine a spotlight on these injustices, fostering a renewed dialogue on genocide prevention worldwide. The fact remains that the Dega people are caught in a horrifying struggle against an authoritarian regime unwilling to coexist with dissent. As life becomes increasingly unbearable for them, and as the world watches in silence, the onus is on us, individuals, organizations, and governments to advocate for justice and strive towards safeguarding the rights of those who have suffered for far too long. Silence is complicit. Only by standing in solidarity with the Dega can we hope to bring about change and prevent the complete erasure of their people from the annals of history. In conclusion, the situation facing the Dega people under the Hanoi government is a striking reminder of what occurs when authority translates its power into active persecution. The denial of their rightful place and dignity, coupled with systematic violence and oppression, constitutes a clear pathway toward genocide. The community continues to combat despair while enduring unspeakable injustices, but they must not face their plight alone. It is time for the global community to acknowledge their suffering, to demand accountability, and to stand up against this silent genocide before it is too late. Indeed, each voice raised in their support not only amplifies their struggle, but also serves as a testament to our shared humanity.